All right, so let me comment out this amount of code for a second here. And by the way, I'm using Dreamweaver, so there's a lot of shortcuts that I could use, but I'm not going to use them. I'm just going to try to stick to the most basic um, operation. As you could notice, I moved from JavaScript um, for the last video to a new program, just so you could see how it works in all these different applications. All right, so next up ahead, I, I want to show you the syntax, basically, of a function, even though you've seen it in action, just to make sure that you get it. Basically, you call the function name. You, put, you give it a name just as you would give, give a variable. There are a lot of functions that are built in just like the alert one. And we're going to meet a lot of them, and you're going to meet a lot of them as you start coding. The next step that you do, it's not enough to call a function. You have to let it know that we want to trigger it. Because basically, a function is very similar to a variable. You could call it, or you could trigger it. A variable automatically, when you call it, you trigger it. Basically, because you could fetch the information that's inside of it. A function, on the other hand, is more like some sort of a container where you could pass that container around or look at the container, or you could say, I want to actually activate this container. To activate the function, to activate that container, you open and close a round bracket. And then you, you end your line with a semicolon. You always do that. That's the con That just helps JavaScript know that you you finished with your operation. By the way, you could also pass parameters just as much as we've passed one parameter with the alert. We could have passed a couple of parameters and basically separating the parameters with a comma. And a parameter is basically just information for that function, so that function could then do something with it. All right, so I want us to see a function in action, a real function in action, which we've seen already the alert in action. So I want to show you another one. So first of all, I'm going to create another variable, and I'm going to call this... Um, big because i'm going to put here the biggest number and by the way i'm getting here a blue value which I agree, which basically tells me that this might be a reserved word or it might be something that will be in the future a reserved word reserved words are basically keywords that a programming language needs such as the var we can't use var because var is used to define something we can't use there's a lot of different keywords like that so whenever if you're using an editor that's smart and you see these colors just avoid those keywords. You don't have to me memorize them by heart. But one great way to avoid them is by always giving your variables a name that starts with their type. So in our scenario, if I call it n big, there, there would never be a reserved keyword that would be called n big. So we solved that issue. All right. So let's see. Uh, let's see a function in action, and we're actually going to see something. And before we do this, let me show you just one more step. So until now, we said there are such things as functions. We've worked with a couple of them, such as the alert and the, well, I, I can't remember which other ones we used. Now, the next step that we want to do is there are, there are functions that are grouped up into buckets. Now, sometimes it's inside of an object, which we're going to learn what an object is in a couple of videos, and sometimes it's inside of a class reference, which we'll learn about that in a future video as well. But I want you to just get the basic syntax of how it actually works. You basically provide here the, let's call it container name, then you use a dot, which is basically how JavaScript works. You use a dot syntax to access and go inside of that container, which we're going to understand a little bit more about that very, very soon. And then we could call that function name in the exact same way as we've done it before. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's see it in action using some a little bit of math. So there's actually a built-in library of mathematical operations inside of JavaScript that is called math. And to access it, we just type math with an uppercase M. And then we, when we press dot, if, we're, if you work in Dreamweaver, you're going to start seeing all these different um, things you could do with math. So I'm just going to start with the most basic one, which is abs, which is basically creates a, a positive value. You put inside a, a number, no matter what type of number, and that number will come back as a positive number. So if I put here minus 20, and then we're going to do an alert right after that for that N big. And again, just notice we use here two functions. One function was inside of a container, and that container was the math container. And we called the function abs inside of the math container. It's, not a, it's basically just organized by categories. And then we passed in one parameter, which was minus 20. Now, just to make things um, a little bit interesting, obviously n big is not the right num name for this. So let's call this n abs. n abs. And I just want to create here a couple of variables. Okay, so I'm going to create here a variable called na. 
which is going to be a number and its value is going to be minus 20. I'm going to create a NB and its value is going to be 32. All right, so we have two variables. And now I just want to show you that although we sent it and we called our math apps just sending a direct number, we could have sent also a variable. Why would we want to do that? Because maybe sometimes those variables are created dynamically or it, they're dependent on other things that so we don't want to use a, a hard coded value. And a lot of times in programming, the less hard coded values you use, the more control you have over your application in general. And that's just a matter of getting used to. So I just want to make sure that I call my, I see that I have an error here because I always start variables with a lowercase n if it's a number, but I start with lower cases and not upper cases. All right, so in its camel case, so it's n abs. So there we go. So let's let's run this. Basically, what we hope that will happen is I just save the file. What we hope will happen is n a, which equals minus twenty. When we send it into the math abs, it should return twenty. So our n abs should equal twenty. So I'm going to click here on the live view and Dreamweaver to be able to see. And here we go. We just got our twenty, which is exactly what we would hope to get. There we go. So we're making some progress, and now we've seen basically. We've already seen how to work with a function that's a standalone one, and we've seen how to work with a function that's inside of a container. And I'm not going to give it names yet because we're going to give those names later on as we learn about objects. But if you really need to know, the name of a function that belongs to an object is called a method. And really the only difference is, is that one function stands in the air while the other function has a relationship with something such as this container. All right, so in our case, by the way, just throwing names, you don't, if you don't know about it, then just don't worry about it. If it sounds complicated, just ignore what I'm saying now. Um, the abs function in our scenario is actually a static function because it doesn't really belong to an object. It's just, just wrapped around inside of some sort of property, some sort of class that basically enables us to access all these different functions. So it's a static function, but for our state, for our state, for our need, we could just call it functions. All right, let's move on to the next step. The next step for us is actually to create our own functions.